Hi, thank you everyone for attending this talk on Team Topologies in Action, Early Results from the Industry, here at the DevOps Enterprise Summit London, Virtual Edition. Hi, I'm Matthew Skelton. I'm one of the co-authors of the book Team Topologies, and I'm the founder of Conflux. And I'm Manuel Paish. I'm an independent consultant and trainer. I'm also co-author of the book Team Topologies. So the book came out in September 2019 by IT Revolution Press. You can find it on teamtopologies.com slash book. Some of the praise we've received around the book talks about a kind of new digital operating model. And we think the book helps address some problems that we hear about often. So some of the questions we hear are, why is our transformation not achieving the kind of fast flow that we were expecting? Or other questions that come up frequently is, you know, what's our purpose as a team and what's our mission within the wider organization? How do we interact with other teams if we don't have clarity around how, what we're supposed to achieve uh, ourselves as a team? Another common question is, why are our teams not able to respond quickly to business needs? And here we're talking not just about new features, but also respond quickly to problems and respond quickly to um, changing customer needs. How can we safely remove low level complexity from customer facing teams in order to make more space and effort available to focus on the actual business problems and solutions? So today in Team Topologies in Action, we're gonna to look at some examples. So the book has been around for about nine months um, since publication, and we have five case studies that we wanna share with you. As a reminder, there are four team types that we talk about in Team Topologies, streamlined teams, enabling teams, complicated subsystem teams, and platform teams. And there are also three core interaction patterns, collaboration, X as a service, and facilitating. You will find these shapes uh, represented in the diagrams of the different case studies that we're going to see. So this is an example diagram, a snapshot in time. Uh, crucially, you should look at this as, you know, a flow of change being represented from left to right. So the first case study is from Jen Sidiger. This is uh, an insurance provider founded in 1847, uh, headquartered in Norway, and with a strong presence in Norway and the Baltics. They've got 4,000 employees, and they've been on a cloud and DevOps transformation from 2015 to the present day. Back in 2015, uh, the software delivery there was quite, quite project-based, quite waterfall, so quite slow and, and not, not particularly responsive. So they knew they needed to change. So they've been on a journey since then. And um, a key aspect of, of their uh, transformation was uh, stream aligned teams, teams with uh, multidisciplinary skills um, that, that focus on a particular uh, business product or service. And they have responsibility for the full kind of end to end life cycle of that product or service. We got KPIs on business outcomes and development speed, uh, quality of operation, operability, and KPIs on security. So that everything to do with that product or service. And these teams are supported by enabling teams in architecture and information security. Um, there's a complicated subsystem team, which is around the core mainframe system, obviously quite a lot older, so specialist skills and so on. And then platform teams, multiple platforms, in fact, um, CRM, infrastructure, application, and analytics, and also a design platform. The results of this way of working has seen over the last five years, a 40% growth in digital sales for Jen Sidiger. They've seen uh, a doubling of the um, amount of customer service that's handled on digital channels. And uh, claims handling is, is now 80% online with 40% automatically resolved. So those are great results for Jen Sinegar and with, we, we'd like to thank Christian Moore, the Chief Digital Officer for sharing that with us today. The second case study is from Pure Gym. Pure Gym is the UK's largest gym operator. There's more with more than 1 million members 
and 230 gyms throughout the UK. They were launched in 2009 and currently expanding into other countries in Europe. They've actually recently uh, provided details of how they're going to keep uh, uh, their gyms safe for people in a kind of pandemic COVID-19 uh, context with, with separation that you can see in the photograph here of, of, uh, that they've released recently. Um, so since 2015, there's been a huge growth in numbers I've seen with more than a million members now, uh, particularly people joining using a mobile app, but also payments and, and bookings and so on as well. The diagrams in this in this case study come directly from from Pure Gym. So this is exactly how they see it. So back in 2015, there's kind of less than 10 people, pretty straightforward way of uh, building software and so on. Um, by 2017, the team had grew to 15 people and there was kind of quite a lot more work. Um, at that time, it was still a case of defining some projects and then passing the, that work to a business as usual BAU team to run it and to, to kind of find bugs and things. Um, and then by 2019, the team had grown to 40 people and they're starting to see problems. Uh, with, particularly with handling over these these projects into the BAU and run teams. Um, it was difficult to to resolve issues in, in, in the live environments. Inter-team communication became a problem. There's too much specialist knowledge in different areas and so on. So there's a real awareness of, of a need to change. And the software was arranged as a monolith. This made it difficult. T teams were working on different uh, services or different parts of the code base, but it was still inside a single code repository. So there's quite a lot of kind of crossover, if you like, and, and um, difficulty uh, s separating uh, different concerns for different teams. 